Greetings, art teacher here with you again, continuing with the printmaking uh, series. In this case, uh, lino cut prints, designing a print. Be sure to do your subscriptions, the favorites, the likes, and leave a comment below, especially if I'm unclear about anything. Now, let's go ahead and move right into this. Remember, we're doing printmaking, and you're going to need a few supplies. I meant I really went into that in depth. And, by introduction, but I'm going to review it very quickly. You'll need one of these called a brayer. This is a little speedball brayer. These are little speedball cutters, and I recommend getting the speedball cutter set that has six of these different blades, and especially for me, the most useful being that blade one, not the gouges, though I do use the gouges sometimes. So you're going to want the uh, kit that has the cutter with six blades. I have two of them. And I use them both, so it's good to have two. You're going to need a block. I have here a speedball six by four uh, mounted linoleum block, and I like to use the golden instead of the battleship gray, and some ink. And I recommend it not. You can use the speedball ink, I suppose. You know, people do have success with it, but I like this Daniel Smith ink lamp black water soluble. I wouldn't jump right into the oil based inks right yet. Maybe do these for a while, then maybe try those. So that's my opinion on it. Um, and then you'll need some paper. And here I have some of that Stonehenge paper. You can see it's a little thicker than this copy paper stuff we've been using. You can see easily see the difference between those two. And that's Stonehenge, and this has already been cut to size. You can tear the paper. I use a paper cutter, a large paper cutter. You can tear it, uh, creasing it and tearing it if you want to do that too. Now today also, real importantly, you'll need some copy paper. Remember I say get a big old 500, uh, ring, a 500 sheet pack. They're, they're like five to $10, they're real cheap, about a penny or two a sheet. And you'll always have some of this to draw and then you'll need maybe one or more pencils too. So today we're going to be talking mostly about sketching out the image and talking about how to develop a good image for your print. We're not going to be doing any printing stuff today so you still have time to run out and get those. And you can also get a barren or you just use a wooden spoon for that. So that's all this review is just to get you um, oriented to the types of supplies that are needed. This is optional and these items are all pretty much required you pretty much need those and i like to keep my brayer so that the brayer is not touching the table but it's upside down like that and that prevents a little notch from developing there now okay developing an image designing a print um you need to remember when you if you draw directly onto your block. If you draw directly onto your linoleum block, what's going to happen there is your image, your picture, it's going to come out as a reverse image. So you're going to have to come up with a way to deal with that. And I have just the way to do it. So we've got that one handled for you. So break this free from my up there. Okay, so if I have this block, what I was doing when I first started doing these, I would draw the picture right out onto the block. And what kept happening is it would look quirky later. And by quirky, I mean everything seemed a little bit off because um, it comes out as an opposite. So here I have one I've already um, cut. To give you an idea of how it would look, uh, so you can proof it just by taking your pencil, but this is going to be the reverse of what it looks like. So just to give you an idea of that. So I can rub it like this, and what that's going to do is give me an idea just by rubbing it down with a pencil. It kind of gives me an idea of what it'll look like but it's going to be the opposite of when I print it. So that's what I mean by reversing the image. 
but you can get kind of a rough idea by doing this. Okay. So what I've done is just made a little reverse proof of it by rubbing it down. And that's going to be the opposite. And that's going to be the problem you have if you just draw it onto here. You end up with a reverse of the real image. So my uh, strategy for dealing with that is get a piece of paper, regular old piece of copy paper, fold it in half. Let's go ahead and cut that in half. So I can just cut that in half. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect because this is the sketch. Put it right up against your block. Hold it down like this. Hold down all the sides. All four sides I'm folding down. So I'm folding it down. Okay, fold it down like that. Now I have the exact dimensions of my block and I can draw out whatever I want to on here, whatever I want my image to look like. And here, I have an example of a drawing I did using that exact same method. It's a little rough looking. The drawing itself isn't really going to be the work of art, so I don't really have to be super careful with it. Anyway, after you draw it out, you take it, and, it, and because you have those awesome little creases right here, it should fit on, you should be able to line it up pretty well. See, if you draw it on this side here, then the creases fold in. You should be able to place it pretty nicely and fit it exactly onto the block just right, because you had already previously creased it. Do you see what I mean? So that makes it easy to line it up and uh, get your registration just right from drawing stage to graphite transfer stage. So that's what we're doing is a graphite transfer. So you draw it out on here, put it onto, using those creases, mount it onto the block, and then you should have a little bit of tape on all four of those sides so that you tape it on there and it stays real tight. So whatever your drawing was, like I showed you my drawing, now that drawing is going to transfer onto the block and you just, you're going to have to get it like that and just scribble all over it. You push kind of hard. And when you push kind of hard on it like that, you end up transferring the image onto the block. And here I've started cutting. I'll just cover that part up. You transfer the image onto the block like this. But what's good about that is when you transfer it for it and then you cut it and then print it, the print is going to turn out exactly like your drawing that you initially did. And that solves the reverse image problem. So let me go through that again, kind of uh, slowly so that you can get every step of that. Number one, cut a piece, of, if you're doing a four inch by six inch print, that's what I suggest you start with. Cut your paper in half. Number two, take that half paper, before you draw on it at all, take that half paper, push it down onto the linoleum, the, the lino cut block or the linoleum block, push it and crease all four of those corners up real good so that it goes like this and you end up with all four sides creased and that gives you a good idea of the dimensions of the print. As a matter of fact, it gives you an exact idea of it. Then, with the creases folded up like that, you're going to draw only in this area. Draw your image, draw your picture, whatever that picture is going to be. And it should come out, well, maybe not exactly like that, but that gives you an idea. Then, take this put some tape on all four sides, put it down onto the block, and it should be easy to fit on because you have all those creases. It should be a pretty precise measure because of those creases. So measure it with those creases. Good, that works. And then go ahead and 
tape it down. All four sides, tape it down. Now, just scribble real hard over that entire block, over that entire piece of paper. And when you do that, it's going to push the image or push the graphite onto the block like this. Then, even though it's kind of a faint image, you can take your pencil and go on top of that faint image and darken in the parts you want to be dark and leave light the, the parts you want to be white in your image. Now, later you're going to cut out all the parts that you want to leave white. So, that's how to deal with the reverse image problem. You might want to replay that and look at it again to be sure you've got it. So, the idea is you're going to need a little masking tape or scotch tape for that part too. So, that's a part of it. Now, next item, personal vocabulary of images. Um, there's a bit to this, try to catch it if you can. I have certain things that I like to draw and that I like to paint and that I like to include in my art. That's kind of a personal vocabulary of images. I could make a whole video just on that, but I'll just introduce it and I probably will later. But I'll just introduce the idea now. I like to do these little birds made out of shapes that you've seen in my drawings and that I've talked about on the decorating the box image. Little stars, you know, moons, things like that. Houses with hills, very simplified images. And those are particularly good for these types of prints because you don't want to use any thin lines. Uh, this type of print thin lines don't work. There's another type of print called an etching and that's really good to do line work or thin lines. But this kind, you're going to be dealing mostly with shapes. So, I would say before you even start uh, developing your drawing to transfer using that graphite transfer idea, before you even start that, you might want to, or you definitely should, let's put it that way, Take a piece of, take a few pieces of this type of paper and just, you know, and, and the dimensions aren't that important, but like fold it into quarters like that so you have four sections. And I would say come up with, um, start developing a, a sense of the types of things you like to include, which are a personal vocabulary of images. You might want to try to avoid any copyrighted characters. You might want to avoid any sort of uh, cliched things or stuff you see all the time. Try to reach a little bit deeper. Don't just grab something that you see on the media. Don't just grab something you see in a cartoon or on a TV show. You're going to try to reach a little bit deeper and try to think of what appeals to me aside from all of that. You know, what are my original ideas, my own ideas that I can use and put into my artwork? And as you develop that, there are a few things to keep in mind. It's a good idea with these types of prints to try to develop images that are made out of shapes. For instance, and you probably don't want to copy mine either because you're going to look into your own uh, sense of who you are to develop your own the types of images you like that have meaning to you. In my case, I like this bird made out of, uh, as you saw in this image here and you've seen in my other images, I like that bird which is made out of simple triangles and squares. It's very useful for this type of print because it has, um, it has shapes instead of lines. It's more shapey more made out of shapes instead of lines. Also, simple stars, moons, suns. These are all things, if you've watched my videos, these are things that pop up kind of over and over again. Here I have an image, a print I made, and there are a lot of kites and lightning bolts and clouds and things like that. Those are images that work well with these kind of prints, again, because they're made out of large sort of blocky shapes. Here I have one where four squids come together and even though those little uh, legs on the squid, they're kind of going all over the place. They are like lines, but they're thick enough 
lines that I can work with them. Now, since I brought up the, that idea, I better take it to the next level. As you make these images and as you develop these images, try to keep in mind how you can use them to move the eye of the viewer around the picture. There are, there's a lot to that, and I'm going to do a whole video probably on just that. It's the rhythm idea, it's the movement idea. Now, it's a good idea, as you saw in this image, I have a lightning bolt. It's like an arrow. When you see a lightning bolt, your eye travels down it toward the place that it's pointing. That way, you can move the eye of the viewer, the person looking at the picture, around the picture. Another way you can do that is, if you have something which is uh, very much attracts the attention of the viewer, a main subject of the picture, you can have that main item, and the viewer looks right at it, a star, a bright star. You can do, use color for that as well, but since these are black and white, color won't be the main thing. Here you can easily see that big bird right in the center with a circle around it is definitely going to be the main thing you look right at. That would be the main subject, but you, it's good to have a hierarchy of importance. So that you have the main subject, but you have other interesting things around the picture that the eye moves around through. So you can have them look right at the main subject, then move their eye around the picture. Okay, so you're really kind of controlling what they look at when they look at the picture. And you're doing that using your personal vocabulary of images. So, I have um, often used in my pictures, you often would, or you sometimes see, down in this corner, remember the eye likes to go off the page down here, because when you read, that's the end of the uh, page right there. And the eye just goes off the page in this corner. So artists need to deal with that corner. In one way, I've dealt with this corner, you know, as I, oh, I'm sorry, did I say this one, I meant this one. As I read, because I was looking at it backwards, okay. As I read, my eye, the words end right there, okay. And then my eye goes off the page there. So it's a natural instinct to go off the page and you lose the attention of the viewer at that corner. So you need to draw the eye of the viewer back into the picture at that corner. So sometimes in my picture, what if I put, and I'm not gonna have to draw this so carefully, but what if I put some kind of plant right there, which curves around right back into the picture. So down in that corner, I could have some kind of planter or something that curves back into the picture. That would be just kind of an obvious but workable strategy to deal with that bottom corner. Also, you often see in the old time pictures called still life, remember a still life is a picture just of objects hanging around there on the table. In those old pictures, you see down in this corner, a knife will point into the picture. So they might have a table here. Um, so they put the table there, just a quickly drawn table, and then on the edge of the table, they'll have a knife going diagonally into the picture. They'll have, that's frequently the case in a, those older, maybe Dutch still lights or something like that. So that's, those are the types of things that you can keep in mind when you are um, developing a sketch for these. You know, that's a lot of information I just gave you, okay? And you don't need to use all of it right away. But the main thing you should be doing now at this point is developing a personal vocabulary of images. And you're going to need a pretty good amount of paper for that. Take those papers, fold them in four, or better still, in order to really do this right, you might want to have a sketchbook and start sketching out your personal vocabulary of images. The trap I see a lot of people fall into, young people, is they keep trying to work on characters and funny little characters and stuff. Yes, that is a personal vocabulary of images, but those might not be the most appropriate thing for these kind of uh, prints 
because those are often focused on line work and you're going to want to focus in mostly on shape. Shape and shapes would be a good, uh, that, that those are uh, the elements of art that you might want to really focus in on would be shape on these types of prints instead of line. Although line is important, as I showed you in this, you can include some, but those are kind of thick lines and you can handle that with these kind of prints. But those, that thin line work is going to be uh, more appropriate for etching. That's a different type of print. So, uh, last thing, sketches. Again, get your paper, fold it in four, do that right there. That would account for four different sketches. When you do your sketches, Try to focus in on shape. Try to focus in on developing a personal vocabulary of images. Those images should be useful and should be focused in on shape, okay? And they should be useful for uh, moving the viewer's eye around the picture. Remember, when you're moving the viewer's eye around the picture, that lower corner down here, it's good to use that to draw the viewer's eye back into the image. Keep that in the back of your mind as you're doing it. Also use that hierarchy of importance idea. Have one main image, one thing that you look at first, then have other interesting items that they look at the main image and draw the viewer's eye around the picture. Here I'm using lightning bolts to draw the viewer's eye around the picture. Even the tail of that kite draws the picture, draws the viewer's eye around the picture. So those are some really powerful ideas to work on with your sketches. Uh, before you actually uh, do one of these, where you fold it around and are going to do a graphite transfer, before you do that, I would come up with at least 10 different ideas on sketches before you even start on this type of thing. So you need to come up with, I would suggest you come up with a large number of sketches and kind of Pick the best ones, pick the parts that work best, and put all that together into this. Otherwise, what you end up with is all the work of cutting this block, and the image doesn't really look so good. So I would say, make sure you've got a lot of interesting things happening in the image. And as you see in my prints over and over, I use a border as well. So think about using a border. In this case, I have that Greek style border. In this case, I have a border just of those blocks going all the way around. So those are a lot of considerations. So you might want to take another look at this video. That's a lot of considerations when developing your imagery. But the main thing is um, try to have the, it, the picture made up out of shapes, not lines. That's the big thing. That hierarchy of importance idea is there, and leading the viewer's eye around the picture is going to be important. And then if you want to add a border, that's nice as well. Those are four big things to work on when you do your ten or more sketches before you do the actual image for the graphite transfer. I know that was a lot. You might want to watch that again. You guys take care. Bye-bye.